Hello, everyone. My name is Ilana, and I'm so excited Hello, that you could join. Uh, Nibbles, what are you doing? I wanted you to say hi to everyone. But, but I'm supposed to introduce you. You're the guest on the show, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Ilana, and I am a member of our performing arts team at the La Brea Tar Pits. And we're so excited you could join us today for Meet Nibbles. And you got a little clue as to who Nibble is, a little preview there. Um, just to let you know, this performance will be about 30 minutes long. So uh, hopefully you can stick around for the whole time. And of course, we are streaming from home, as you can see, right? You might even see my cat walking around here in a moment. We also have a lot of people helping out behind the scenes, so I wanted to introduce them. So we have other friends from the La Brea Tar Pits. We have John and Eli and another John and Jenny and Betsy and Robert and Brian, all helping out behind the scenes. And they're gonna be in the chat, helping out the slides. Um, so, if you do have any questions for us, what we would love is for you to use the chat function because we, you can see us, but we can't Ilana. see you. So, Ilana, can, are you going to introduce me? I'm getting to that. I'm not done yet. Okay. Well, when you do, can you make it really obvious so that I can make my big entrance? Okay, but we've already seen you. Yeah but I want to make a big ferocious entrance. Okay, okay, okay. Let me finish, then I will cue your entrance by saying, everyone, hold on to your tails because we've got a special guest for you today. How's that? Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. So as I was saying, everyone, we are going to have at the end of the show, a Q&A section. So a section where Nibbles answers some of your questions. So throughout the show, feel free to enter any questions that come up into the chat. And you probably know how to use the chat by now. Sometimes it's in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Sometimes it's at the bottom, depending on the device you're on. So you can go ahead and throw some questions in there. And as I was saying, we can't see you or hear you. So go ahead and use that function. And if you feel like, you know what, I actually just want to enjoy the show, not use the chat, maybe write some things down on a piece of paper. You can even draw a picture of some of the things you see. You could draw a picture of nibbles. And then you're welcome to send any of that to us. Your teachers should have our email address. We'll be sure to drop that in the chat and also share it at the end of the show on a slide. So you can send us your artwork or your questions um, or thoughts that you wrote. All right. So everyone, hold on to your tails because we've got a special guest for you today. As you may have noticed, he is just a cub, but Why? he Why? is- Wait, Ilana, did you get my rewrites? Your rewrites? Yeah, for my introduction. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, I have them here. Okay, use those and start over. <clears throat> this cat is not your average cat. He's a ferocious saber-toothed cat with teeth the size of a large kitchen knife, making all tremble in their boots when they see him coming. Wait, 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 hold on, nibbles. Uh, but, but your teeth are not the size of a large kitchen knife. What do you mean? Well, Nibbles, you still have your milk teeth, your baby teeth. The large canines that saber tooth cats are famous for won't grow in for at least another year. <laughs> are you trying to scare us? Yeah, did it work? Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then read the introduction or I'll pounce through the screen. Okay, you got it, Nibbles. <laughs> I, and, and can we think of a different name for me? Nibbles doesn't sound so scary. It should be something like Slayer. <laughs> Nibbles, we have some nice guests with us today. A name like Slayer might scare them away. How about something more cuddly like uh, Bubbles? 
But Ilana, I am a saber-toothed cat. It has to be something ferocious like Gargon. <laughs> Gargon sounds like you're some sort of ogre. How about something fun like Skippy? Uh, my teeth are my best feature, Ilana. See? Mm. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. How about something you do with your teeth like uh, Chewy? Chumpy? Munches? Nice. Bites. Nibbles. Yeah. Perfect. Nibbles it is. <laughs> nibbles, nibbles, nibbles. Ni Wait. Uh, okay, nibbles, let's finish introductions. Uh, you want me to continue with the one you wrote? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. This cat is not your average cat. He's a ferocious saber-toothed cat with teeth the size of a large kitchen knife, making all tremble in their boots when they see him coming. He roamed the dark asphalt seep-lined streets of Ice Age Los Angeles before there were streets, or it was called Los Angeles. And there was no ice either, by the way. It was actually pretty temperate. Lovely weather, lots of trees and watering holes. There was this one watering hole where my friends and I used to... Excuse me, everyone. <laughs> I'm just going to go with the original introduction. <laughs> what? Uh, Esteemed guests, thank you so much for your patience. I'm excited to introduce you to a special guest all the way from the Ice Age, also known as the Pleistocene era. He is not a full-grown saber-toothed cat, but an adorable young cub with little bitty milk teeth. <laughs> it's the one and only Nibbles. Right. <laughs> so Nibbles, we have a lot of guests here who are excited to learn more about you and the Librea Tar Pits, where a lot of your relatives and colleagues have been discovered. Yes, yes. Well, hello, everyone. Ice Age Los Angeles was a beautiful time. There were no buildings or paved streets or any of those. Hey, hey, hey. Why is there uh, a butterfly Sounds in like here? it was very different from today. A butterfly. There's butterflies flying around. It's taunting me. <clears throat> Nipples, our audience. Oh, oh, yes, yes. It was a glorious time to be a saber-toothed cat like me. Well, it's a real treat to be able to talk to an animal that is now extinct, meaning none of your relatives are alive today. <laughs> well, it is a pleasure to be here with all of you extant human animals. Nibbles, can you give us a glimpse into the day in the life of Ice Age Los Angeles? What would we have seen? Ah, indeed. Well, as I was saying before the butterfly rudely interrupted me is that Ice Age Los Angeles was a beautiful time. There were no buildings or paved streets or any of those loud, noisy things that go honk, honk, honk. Cars? Yeah, none of those annoying things. <laughs> I can't even imagine Los Angeles without cars. Now, it's called the Ice Age. Does that mean Los Angeles was covered in ice? Oh, no, no, no. You would think that would be the case, but there was no ice in Ice Age Los Angeles. Well, yeah, that might be surprising for a lot of our guests. Now there was ice covering much of North America, but not here in Los Angeles. So what did the landscape look like during the Pleistocene era here in Los Angeles? Well, we have many of the same plants that you see here today. Oh, wow. So friends, we can simply imagine taking away all the buildings and the cars and add some uh, mammoths and mastodons and dire wolves. And, and... saber-toothed cats. Oh, but of course. Yeah. And we'd get a glimpse into a scene during prehistoric Los Angeles. Precisely. Now, speaking of these large creatures, can you tell us about the asphalt that caused the demise of so many of them? Well, do I have to? I know, I know, it's a sensitive subject, but I'm curious, were the La Brea tar pits, big, deep 
pits that animals would fall into? Oh, no, 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 no. They were actually just super sticky puddles of asphalt. Oh, and this asphalt would bubble up from the below the Earth's crust, correct? That's right. And get this, Ilana, just the other day when I was taking a stroll around Los Angeles, I saw asphalt seeps. Yes, the La Brea Tar Pits is famous for its asphalt seeps, still active today. Have any of you been there? Oh, oh man, there's that butterfly again. Hey. Uh, so, so Nibbles, <laughs> these seeps were sticky enough to trap a big creature like a Colombian mammoth or an adult Smilodon fatalis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were awful sticky seeps. Poof, like, like a fly to flypaper. Yeah, like a dire wolf to the asphalt. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that saying, but anyway, speaking of dire wolves, at the La Brea Tar Pits, we find a lot of predators or meat eaters that were trapped in the asphalt. Why so many? Well, it is an awful tale. Well, I'm sorry. You don't have to talk about it if it's One you know, day, too long. a clumsy ground sloth was feasting at a watering hole. And what does it do? Steps right into an asphalt seep and gets stuck. That's right. And once it realizes it is stuck, what does it do next? It cries for help. Like a sloth to panicking, Ilana. <laughs> terrible, just terrible. Oh. oh, and then all of the predators, the meat eaters hear the call and that brings them to the scene. Yep. And then they get trapped trying to eat that one plant eater, that herbivore. Precisely, Ilana. An awful tale as I would... Whoa! I'm going to get you, butterfly! Ah! Oh. <laughs> oh, well, it looks like we've lost his attention. <laughs> Come here, butterfly! <clears throat> he is a cub, after all. <laughs> a frightening predator, you mean. <clears throat> uh, do any of you have kittens at home? Does this look familiar? I mean, yes, saber-toothed cats likely had to practice hunting when they were cubs, just like your house cat might chase a toy mouse. <laughs> you know, see, scientists believe that saber-toothed cats were ambush hunters, right? So they would hide behind a bush or a rock and sneak up on their prey, the animal they were hunting, and then they would strike. Oh. Oh. Ah. You okay there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, Nibbles, it, it looks like you were practicing your ambush hunting. Do you yeah. think you could show our guests how it works? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Would everyone like to do some hunting? All right, everybody. It's time for some real life hunter training. But before we get started, Ilana, we need to get warmed up. So everyone, right where you are seated or up on your feet, I need you to start shaking your body. Get that blood flow. Uh, it nibbles, I, I, I was just thinking you'd show them how you hunt. Ilana, it is best to learn through experience. Keep shaking, everybody. Yeah. You too, Ilana. Yeah. Oh. Shake it! Woo! All right. Now, all right, now that ben. we're all warmed up, we got to work on our crouching. So when you're hunting, it is important to be able to get low and stay low, preferably behind a rock or a bush to keep hidden. Um, I, I, I'm guessing they might not have rocks or bushes inside their homes. <laughs> well then they will have to improvise with whatever is in their environment. That's called being savvy. What are you hiding behind, Ilana? Oh, well, I'm, um... There is no uh, time for second guessing in the wild, okay. Ilana! Oh, okay, um, how's this? Your commitment is noted. All right, everybody. Is everyone crouching? Is everyone holding it? Does anybody mind if I take a break? Whew, crouching is tough. Nibbles! Oh, oh, right, 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 crouching. Right. 
Now, the next thing is that when you're in the crouch position, you'll notice my haunches are way up in the air. Don't know why this is, but it's totally necessary. And then when my prey starts to approach, I start to waggle back and forth, kind of like this. Give it a try. Feels good. <laughs> Feels tiring. <laughs> yeah, being on the prowl is not for the faint of heart, Ilana. Keep waggling. Then what? What? Uh, what's next? <laughs> We're going to be out of breath before we've even done anything. Oh, yeah. Next is the best part. dinner so that's my bad that's on me all right everybody back to crouching and your dinner is getting close you're holding that crouch you start to waggle the dinner is so close you can almost taste it you're waggling and we pounce in three two one pounce <laughs> <laughs> wow Great job, everyone. Ambush hunting like a Smilodon Fatalis or a Sabertooth Fat. Aw, oh, yeah. Keep practicing, everybody. Maybe even on a younger sibling. So, Nibbles, we hear a lot about the animals that went extinct, such as yourself. Thanks for rubbing it in. Uh, but who are some of the survivors? What were some of the creatures that lived during the Ice Age and are still around today? Oh, there were so many, Ilana. We can look at my photo album. Let's do that. Oh, cool. Uh-huh. Yep. Just getting pulled up here. <laughs> All right. This is going to be great. So first up, we've got my delicious appetizing cat friends, the mountain lion and bobcat. Oh, yes. We still have these big cats in Los Angeles today. I'm a big fan of P-22, the mountain lion that lives in Griffith Park. Yeah, he's a good buddy of mine. Who else do you have there? Well, next up, we've got Fox. Oh, <laughs> what a delicious buddy he was. Yep, got into way too much trouble together. <laughs> oh, well, maybe some stories for another time. Yeah. Oh, yes. I see foxes where I live, near the Angeles National Forest. So cool. Say hi to them for me. I will. And let's see here. We've got the Golden Eagle. What a tasty, toothsome delight she was. She tried to teach me how to fly, but I never really could get the hang of it. Mm. Yeah, pretty tricky to fly without those big wings. Yeah, flying is for the things that have wings, as they say. And finally, we got my succulent buddy, the gopher snake. Hello. Oh, yes. So oh, they can be found in our local mountains, too. You know, often people mistake them for rattlesnakes, but these are non-venomous. Rattlesnakes are flavorsome friends, too. Oh, I love rattlesnakes, too. And they help keep the rodent populations down. Yeah. Oh, they like to eat those rats and mice. Yuck. Not for me. <laughs> well, Nibbles, thank you so much for sharing your photo album. Yeah. You know, I'm also pretty impressed that you refrained from eating some of those crumbs. Oh, Ilana, I am a cat of great sophistication. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Well, Nibbles, I know that we have a lot of guests here who may have some questions for you. And before we get to that, though, I would love, since this is your chance to meet some human animals, I would love to know, Nibbles, if you have any questions for our guests. Yeah, of course I do. Okay, so first up, we were hunting a lot, but I want to know what everyone in the audience does really well and practices really hard at. 
So I practice really hard to hunt, but what do you all practice very hard at to be good? Oh, let's see. We have math, art. What else? Being a wolf. <laughs> being a, what? Swimming. Being a wolf? Yeah, being a wolf. Swimming, reading, art and playing, music, more art, lots of artists. Living, just living. Yeah, that takes practice. Doing crazy flips. <laughs> yeah. We have a couple gymnastics, Minecraft, more art lovers, soccer. Wow. Oh, that's great. Is soccer, Ilana, is soccer like a team sport? Like a pack sport? It is sport? a team sport. It's a pack sport. Yeah. That is so cool. Did everyone know I travel in packs all the time? That's right. Well, you might be really good at soccer nibbles. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Ilana, I'm going to learn soccer. I, a good goal to have. Your 2021 yeah. goal. I like it. That's right. Any other so, questions, Nibbles, for your for our friends here? Yeah. Um, I would like to know what everyone finds tasty. What do you all eat? Mm, good question. What foods do you like to eat? Candy, tofu, chicken wings, carbs, anything with uh, carbs, pizza, carbs. chicken. Uh, let's see, chicken Alfredo, pizza, lots of pizza, strawberries, coffee. Ooh, I love coffee. Whoa. chips, fruit salad. Probably not your favorite nibbles. I don't Crab. know. What does everyone <laughs> think that my favorite food is? A lot of Ooh. delicious stuff coming up there in the chat, but I'm curious if anybody. Yeah, what knows do you what think I nibbles like eats? Eat? Yeah, I see a lot of meat, 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 meat. Oh, someone wrote humans. Humans? Nope. <laughs> I actually prefer meat, of course, but my preferences are deer and bison. Deer and bison. Yeah, that makes sense. There are a lot of those around during the Ice Age. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Nibbles, we have a lot. Of, yeah, someone guessed deer. We have a lot of great guesses in there. Um, I think it would be great. We only have a few minutes left. So it would be great to hear a few of the questions from all of you. So I'm going to bring our friend Betsy on and she is going to share some of your questions with us. Hi, we do. We've got eight questions. I also want to give a shout out to some of the schools here. We have a group of 150 students from Pflugerville, Texas, and from my old stomping grounds, Avon, Ohio. That's right. I grew up in Ohio. So welcome to all the students here today. Hello, questions. everyone. <laughs> First question is from Isabella. How do you know the color if it's extinct? Oh, such a good question. So, you know, we are making, our scientists are making an educated guess. So that means that, unfortunately, a lot of the skin and fur doesn't get fossilized in the tar, so, or the asphalt, so um, we make guesses based on what other big cats uh, fur looks like and coloration looks like, and also by what we think the environment looked like and what might have been um, the colors that might have blended in with the environment a bit. So yep. yeah, educated guesses. It's, yeah. it's very important to be able to blend in with your environment. And Chrissy That's would right. like to know, when did you go extinct? Um... Let's see. We've been around for a while, but Ilana, when did we stop being around? About 15,000 15, years ago. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And some questions about why no ice if there was an ice age in Los Angeles. That's from Karen and also Harper wanted to know, know. does that mean it was deserts? It's such a good question. Now, it wasn't quite a desert. It just wasn't covered in ice. Um, you know, a lot of it's called the Ice Age because a lot of um, what we know as North America today was covered in ice, but where we are in Los Angeles was not. And so the Ice Age, that term is a little misleading. So another word you can use that is maybe a little less misleading is we can call it the Pleistocene era. And maybe one of my chat helper friends can type that. Pleistocene. Pleistocene. 
era. Yeah. And that's another name for the Ice Age. Yeah, the time of the Ice Age. Ilana, Ilana, you are crushing it with these questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nipples. How about this one from Kennedy? What are dire wolves? Are they wolves? Oh, my goodness. What a good question. And in fact, there's some new research saying that they may not be exactly wolves, but it's so new. I would rather than me misquote the research, I would look it up, look up new research on dire wolves, and you'll find out that the word we're moving into no longer calling them dire wolves, but it's not officially adopted yet by the museum. So we can still call yeah. them dire wolves. Change Ilana, is so hard. I know those guys and they definitely are not wolves. They're a whole different yeah. evolutionary branch. Yeah, I believe they be they are more related, closely related to jackals, something along those lines. So, yeah. That is pretty cool. So uh, we, we need a refresher on what is ambush hunting and what is an ambush hunter? Amir would like to know. Nibbles, take uh, it away. Well, an ambush hunter is something that sneaks up on its prey. So it stays crouched and hidden. That's why I have all this fur coloring that will hide me from my prey in my environment. And then I sneak up to get as close as I can, because let me tell you, those deer, they are really fast. And then I pounce from the shadows so that I can take down my prey very quickly. That's called an ambush. So I set it up by hiding, waiting for just the right moment, and then pouncing. <laughs> so ambush is like another word yeah, for surprise, and, yeah? Yeah, it's like surprise. And just, you know, just a comparison, you know, other cats like cheetahs, they chase their prey and tire them out. And, and saber-toothed cats don't do that. They don't chase them for long distances. They pounce and tackle them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more of a sprinter. I'm not much of a long distance chase sort of thing. Exactly. We no like marathons to just tackle them. That's right. And Joel, mm -hmm. Joel wanted to know, were there dinosaurs here in LA? There were not. Yeah. During the time of the dinosaurs, um, what we know is LA was under the ocean. And dinosaurs, as we know, are only land dwelling uh, creatures. And what's the space of time between dinosaurs and saber toothed cats? Oh man, millions of years, <laughs> hundreds of millions of years. Yeah, the math I can't do off the top of my head, but yeah, dinosaurs went extinct, you know, 65 million years ago, right? So about that long ago. Great. Well, or we've about got, that far apart. We've got about 30 wow. seconds left. I just wanted to mention that a lot, we've had a lot of comments from teachers and students about how cute and funny you are, Nibbles, and you too, Aww. Ilana. And, oh, and a, lot, a lot of teachers saying thank you for having everybody here today. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. We're really happy that you could be with us today. And thank you, Nibbles, for being here to answer some questions for our guests and, and talk about your life as a saber tooth cat. You bet, Ilana. It was my pleasure. And it's so good to see you, everyone. Goodbye and have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you. And we're going to put up a slide to finish. Um, you can take a screenshot of it. It has some more information of how to get in touch with us, um, how to learn more about our shows that we provide. Um, so go ahead and send us an email. Check out our website. And we hope to see you again. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. See you later. Have fun. Where'd that butterfly go? Butterfly. Ah. Thought you could get away from me, huh? I'm coming to get you, butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Here you!